This is not your typical Mustang. This is the Mustang Shelby GT500. For this Mustang, Ford has combined aggressive styling, extreme aero, lightweight parts, and a supercharged 5.2 liter V8 that makes 760 horsepower, all in a bid to create the ultimate muscle car. That's a pretty bold ambition, so I suppose we'd better test if they've got it right, hadn't we? Quick sound check. Oh my god. That is nasty. And we can't do this on cold tires, obviously, so line lock. Crazy! 847 newton meters. My God! And the noise! That is the loudest. I kid you not. The loudest production car I have ever heard in my life. It sounds like a lion with toothache being kicked in the. actually four levels to the exhaust. I'm in normal mode right now and I can barely hear myself think. But then there's sport and track on top of that. But come on, there isn't a track in the country where you wouldn't get black flagged with a car making this kind of noise. It's unnecessary. Genuinely, it feels absolutely mega. I bought a Coyote Mustang because I thought that was insane. About 450 horsepower from a 5-litre V8 is nothing to be sniffed at, trust me. But this thing is making more than 300 horsepower extra on top. It doesn't feel like a Mustang, it feels like a whole different animal. The source of that noise isn't the Coyote engine you get in the normal 5-litre Mustang GT, and neither is it the Voodoo engine from the more powerful GT350R. This one is Ford's most extreme V8 yet, codenamed Predator. For this, they've dropped the compression so it can take more boost from the 2.6 litre Eaton supercharger to produce more power. The only problem is this, look, flappy paddles. What's all this, Ford? Where's my manual? I'm in a muscle car. I want to take control of the situation, roll through the box myself. The reason is, quite simply, bragging rights. Ford wanted the GT500 to be the fastest accelerating muscle car on the planet, and there's frankly no way to achieve that if there's some fleshy idiot in charge of the gear shifts. For the ultimate in acceleration, gear changes have to be controlled via the machine, which can upshift in 80 milliseconds. But does the system actually work? All right, let's see if it's justified. We've got launch control. Very easy to operate, by the way. You press the snake button, and then you go into track apps, and launch control, you set your RPM, and then foot on the brake, foot on the accelerator, and then you send it. Oh, oh, oh my god. <laughs> It's quick, but not as quick as you might expect. Without the help of a sticky drag strip and perfect conditions, the front engine rear drive layout results in a 4 second 0-62. Once it's on the move, it's rapid, but off the line, it does struggle. The other problem with the GT500 is that it's a pain to live with, if you can even buy one. This car is not available in the UK, which means it's only available in left-hand drive, which means it's not a great daily. The noise upsets locals, pulling out of junctions is a nightmare, overtaking is downright dangerous, and it's not the kind of vehicle you'll want to drive if you're the shy retiring type. And then there's the fuel economy. 
This car, even when driven normally, struggles to see double figures, which means you'll be lucky to get 100 miles on a full tank. It's the kind of thing that will make you want to just leave it parked up. But luckily, there's just as much pleasure to be had from the GT500 when it's standing still. It is an attractive car though, isn't it? Absolutely mega in this grabber green. And the best part is, it only costs $81,000. That's what, 60 grand in real money? Plus I love the design flourishes you get because it's a Shelby. You got snake badges all around the car, this huge Shelby front splitter, as well as this massive power dome on the bonnet. And that's not actually there for show either because, well, let me show you. You push these two buttons, one on either side, you can actually see the start of the show, the 5.2 litre Predator engine with a supercharger bolted right on top of it underneath that Ford Performance shot brace. I love the fact it's not hidden away underneath some crappy plastic shroud and it's there taking pride of place. The engine itself is hand built by one man with a support team in the niche line in the Romeo plant. And at the end of the process, he actually signs his name into a plaque using, I guess, a screwdriver. On so many performance cars, which are hand built, they sometimes pre-print a plaque and then place it on top of the engine. But that, that's just metal on metal. Lovely touch. Around the side, you've got 20 inch wheels wrapped in Michelin Pilot Sport 4S rubber, 16 and a half inch steel brake discs with massive Brembo brake calipers. And I love the detail down here on these side skirts. Really nice touch. Plus tiny, tiny wing mirrors, which are American spec. So they're much smaller than you get on UK cars. So you can't actually see behind you, but in this car, you'll be going so quickly, you don't actually need to see behind you anyway. And that leads me to this enormous rear wing. Now. This looks good from a distance, but when you actually get up close to it, it's a tiny bit plasticky. When you drive the car, you can see it flapping around, but you can upgrade this to a carbon rear wing if you go for the carbon pack. That gives you a carbon wing, carbon wheels, a rear seat delete, and Michelin Cup 2 tires. And finally, as you've already heard, these enormous quad exhausts, which uh, I'll just check if you can fit your fist in them. Yep, just invented that test. Absolutely, yeah, outrageous. The GT500 is not all about posing and making noise, of course. Ford didn't design this car for posing in. Ford designed this car to perform. And by every measure, it performs. Put your foot down in a straight line and the rear just squats, the front lifts up and it launches towards the horizon. It's genuinely efficient at turning power into performance where other rear wheel drive cars with this much power are pretty terrifying. Ferrari 812 Superfast, for example. This isn't, I wouldn't say it's a pussycat, but you're never scared of it. Even in the corners, it's surprisingly well glued down. It takes a surprising amount of cornering force before it starts to understeer. And while it does oversteer on command, you can actually get on the power super early before it starts to do anything too crazy. Wow, there's so much traction. The brakes are surprisingly effective as well. It doesn't come with carbon ceramics, but the amount of stopping power that you get from these is outstanding. It's almost as impressive as the acceleration and you can do it time and time again. The discs are actually bigger than the wheels you used to get on some old Mustangs. One of the major downsides for me though is the fact that when you get into a corner a little bit too hot, that's when you realize there's not an awful lot of feedback from the front axle. You never actually know when the front end is gonna break loose. But what it does, all it ever really does is wash wire gently, but then you lift off and it corrects its line really smoothly, really predictably. And there is so much traction. You basically just throw it into a corner, put your faith in it and let the car do the rest. It's not a precision machine, it's not a driver's car, it's not scalpel sharp like a McLaren 765LT for example, but it is surprisingly effective at what it does and I reckon on the track it could give supercars a massive run for their money, it's that good. As for the gearbox, I'm going to moan about it one more time, I'm sorry. It's effective, it's very good, but 
he could have engineered a bit more aggression, a bit more snap into the shifts. They're fast, but they're not as involving as I'd really, really want. But I tell you what, that power, that torque, super addictive, super fun. I'm really impressed by this car. In fact, more than anything else, I'm impressed that this car actually exists. We live in a world now where the top Mustang, the most important one in the Ford lineup, is the electric Mach E. But here we are with a 760 horsepower Shelby GT500 that sits as the apex predator. And predator is the perfect word for this, given the code name of the engine. The apex predator of the Mustang world, of the muscle car world. I really like it. This isn't just the Mustang. This is the Mustang. Oh.